Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. Let them watch not combine lies with Kumi Shah Shirali. Get up honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that will well. And Shalom Waha Blah Baki Yashar Yashirali, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. Baharacha Kadash Shah Amaf and the Holy Spirit of Truth. And uh, the title of this video is going to be something along the lines of The Lord Will Feed Us. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. All right, he's going to feed us. There's no doubt, no question about it. Okay, so the scripture I'm gonna start off with is the book of Matthew, because we're seeing Esau. He's going to create a famine, right? He's gonna start holding back resources, like in the ancient days, right? When a siege would happen, a siege would take place, and they would cut off our resources. Like when you read in the book of Judith, right? They knew that our water source, we was on the top of a hill. They knew that our water source was at the bottom of the hill. So they surrounded that 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 water source so that we, we try to starve us out, right? They took hold of, uh, of the resources that we need to sustain ourselves so that they so that we would submit onto them. That's what a siege is. And that's what we see taking place again, all right? The last siege of Jerusalem, the time of Jacob's trouble, in which we're approaching very, very quickly. And we're seeing people already get nervous. We're seeing people already get scared. Already starting to doubt, already starting to crumble and, and, and submit to Esau, Edom, and ain't shit really even happened yet. This is only the beginning of sorrows. All right, so let's start off with the book of Matthews. This is Matthew chapter six and verse. Hmm, Matthew chapter six and verse. 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. This is in the red letter. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. Okay? And Yahweh Shai, just like his father, is not a man that he would lie. Matthew chapter 6 and 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, which ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air. So we don't need to be worried about that. Take no thought. We don't need to be worried about that. Okay? Scripture say cast off mortal thoughts in the book of, uh, in the book of Second Ezra. All right? Say cast your cares upon Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai for he careth for you. We don't need to be worried about any of these things. In Thessalonians it says be careful for nothing. Meaning what? You go into that word careful means to pretty much worry. Don't be worried about nothing. All right, but with prayer and supplication, let your petition be known before Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Roughly paraphrasing, I believe it's in Thessalonians. So it says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. But they're threatening my job if I don't take the vaccine. Right? The f hey, where do the where do the fowls of the air clock in at? Do they clock in at some damn bird factory? No, they don't. But they still get fed. Do they go to Walmart? You see a damn big ass bird. All right, in line at Walmart. Just waiting, looking around and shit. Waiting to check out with a with a cart. <laughs> no, but they still eat every single day, right? It says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Are we not much better than they? As Israelites, more specifically, servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, are we not much better than a, than a bird, right? It says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his statue? So the Lord can the Lord can make us grow a whole cubit, right? He has the power to do anything. So we don't need to worry about Esau Edom's threats. We don't need to worry about anything that, that any carnal threats uh, 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 that he's pushing forth, man. I'll take your job away. Take the damn job. We're not trusting upon Esau Edom. He is not our, our stay. The Lord has freed us. Right? From this devil's mental and spiritual captivity. Now we'll return to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Uh, is it Isaiah 10? It says, Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again. We've escaped. It says, thy truth shall make you free. 
So Esau Edom, I believe I was watching the um the elders um the elders in Dallas, and they had some special guests, some some uh, elders that was uh from L.A. and older brothers from L.A. and um, I think some other camps. The brother from um Kansas, Kansas City, uh Mahala, you know, uh there's a couple brothers that was out there. I was watching their live stream, be even as pilgrims, right? But um. I was lost my point. It was a point that they was making. Oh yeah, we we've escaped. So they're looking at us as um they're looking at us as runaway slaves. Now what do you do with your runaway slave? When you catch them, you try to brand them to show ownership, right? And this is what he's gonna try to do to the nation of Israel. You had Joe Joe Biden, right? Ho Biden, uh, um slip of the tongue. His whole his own tongue fell upon him. He was about to say, yeah, we gotta get all the Israel. I mean the and said some dumb shit. He's an idiot. He's a straight idiot. All right, and that's. Every time I mention his name, I got to make sure I call him an idiot, all right? But that's their goal. That's their agenda, all right? To vaccinate all the Israelites and uh, more importantly, okay, put that microchip within all the Israelites, okay? It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant, being the elect of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. Stay means what? To, uh, to go to for support or to trust in So we're not going to trust in Esau Edom The one that smote us for anything Okay We're not going to look to him for our support But what are we going to do It says But shall stay Shall trust Right Shall look to the Lord for support Right Shall stay upon the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai The Holy One of Israel In truth Okay That's where our trust our trust lies Back in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the, lily, the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if Yahweh so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, and sh uh, slack it. shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? We have to have faith, man. In Hebrews, it says, without faith it is impossible to please him. When Yahweh was on this earth and he was walking with his disciples, he would get mad. He would get pissed off at the disciples when they would show doubt. He would always say, O ye of little faith, how long will I bear with you? Right? He was getting on them for doubting the power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Oh, well, Yahweh Shai would always get on them for doubting the power of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Okay? That, in, that infuriates him. It says, Woe unto you that is faint hearted. You will not be defended, for you believe if not. Alright? If you don't believe that, you're going to die. Alright? By faith are we saved through grace, which is not of ourselves, is, is, is a gift of the Heavenly Father. If you don't have that faith, you're not going to be saved. You are not going to be defended. It says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your Heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He knows that we need these things. Our Father knows that we need these things, right? Just like the brothers, all right, and even the sisters out there that are parents, okay, you your child doesn't know where to, what the hell he's gonna put on, what the hell he's gonna eat. He just knows that you're gonna make that. He just knows that it's gonna be there, right? He has the faith. He has the faith. You've been clothing them all this time. You've been giving them food all this time. He knows or she, right? Whatever your child knows that you're gonna provide. That's the type of faith. It says be like children, right? The little ones, okay. We're the Lord's sons. We're his children. We're his servants. He is going to take care of us. All right? He is going to feed us. He is going to give us raiment. He is going to give us, cloth give us clothing. He knows that we have need of all these different things. All we have to do is focus on serving him. It says, for all these things do the Gentiles seek. Uh, let me read that again. It's Matthew chapter 6 and 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying... What shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness and all these things shall be added on to you. So as long as we're seeking Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, everything else will be taken care of. Everything else that we need, 
our uh, uh, necessities will be given to us. In the, in the Apocrypha, it says that the Lord will give every needful thing in due season. And we've seen it before. All right. If we're in tune with the spirit. Okay. If we're uh, uh, um, constantly speaking to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, he always gives us what we need when we need it. Okay. When we eat every single day, that's the Lord giving that to us. Not Walmart, not whatever grocery store you go to, not the job right, that's paying you. It's Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai that's supporting us now. And he's going to continue to support us when there is no more jobs and when there is no more grocery stores. There's another scripture I want to get. This is um, Isaiah chapter 26. And verse, I'll start at verse 1. Isaiah 26 and 1. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai appoint for our walls and for, for walls and bulwarks. So we're a defense city, man. As it says in the book of Jeremiah. Okay? Iron, or iron walls. The Lord has us protected. The angels of the Lord are encamped around them that fear him. Verse 2. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. That's the remnant. Verse 3. This is the point. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. As long as we trusted in him and our mind is stayed upon him. As that Matthew said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. All these things shall be added on to us. We will be kept in perfect peace. Right? So what triggered this, you know, obviously everything that's going on. The food, the rumors of the food shortages and uh, um, the dollar, the value of the dollar decreasing. Which means the prices of um, our, our daily necessities increasing. On top of all that, I was reading the book of Numbers, right? Numbers, the 11th chapter. Uh, let me see where I'm going to start at. Numbers 11 and 17. This is Numbers chapter 11 and verse 17. And I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone so at this point Jake Israel was getting on Moses' nerves Moses was like man just kill me man I'm tired of dealing with these niggas why you uh 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 um, why he was he was really mad like he was sometimes I'm like damn you gotta have a good relationship with the Lord to never mind all right nonetheless he was Speaking to the Lord, he's like, man, why are you, why'd you make me the head of these niggas, man? These rebellious niggas. All right, so on and so forth. Just kill me. And the Lord was like, dude, just relax. You know, in other words, just relax. I'm going to put, gather, gather 70 men, right? Who you know to be elders and, and, and chief rulers of the people. And I will put the same spirit that I have on you. I'm going to put it on them. Right. And the Wadi Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, because the same spirit that he uh, 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 put on the apostles and the elders, the men that's been laboring for decades, he has also put that upon us. All right. The brothers that's coming up under them, the men of great millstone, to labor for Yahweh Bar Sham Yahweh Shai. All right? To give diligence to make our calling and election sure, to study, to show ourselves approved. Okay? And so on and so forth. It says, And say, and say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for ye have so they was complaining, yeah, we could go back to Egypt and get the melons and the leeks and all this other bullshit, man. Meanwhile, the Lord was feeding them with manna every day, right? Giving them enough, sustaining them enough every single fucking day. They said, well, we want some flesh to eat. So the Lord said, all right, I'm going to give you what you asked for. And, and in that, it's actually really spiritual. Because when you go into John, the sixth chapter, the Lord is that bread that came down from heaven, right? So they rejected the, 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 the heavenly bread and asked for flesh, right? And asking for what? For, for carnality. And that's what you're going to get. All right, you rejected. Same with when uh uh was it Pilate? He was about to release. He was about to release a prisoner. They chose that damn criminal Barabbas instead of Yahweh Shai. So you're gonna get what you asked for, okay? You rejected the Lord, therefore he's gonna reject you, and you're gonna have to deal with Esau's carnal fleshly ass, which is the left hand of the Lord. It says, and say unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow and ye shall eat flesh for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord saying, who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt before the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh will give you flesh and ye shall eat. Let me slow down. Stop at my commas. It says, verse 19, 
ye shall not eat ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until it come out of your nostrils. And the Lord, the Lord is cold, man. He wasn't playing. He's like, he's like, you're not gonna just eat it one day. You begging and you doubting me, and you keep murmuring. You will eat it for a month till it come out your nose. All right, gonna make you sick of it. It says, and it be loathsome unto you because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you and have wept before him saying, why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, the people, and Moses said, the people among who I am are 600,000 footmen. And that is just the men. All right. So even Moses was, Moses was uh, uh, like, damn, you finna feed all these niggas? You know, I'm, I'm kind of jumping the gun, but he's like, we, there's 600,000 men amongst us, let alone, so you know if there's six, you know we have to be in the millions, right? If there's 600,000 men, imagine if all those men had just one woman, right? That's 1.2, uh, uh, like it, just one woman, that'd be 1.2 million. Then all the children that come, so we have to be in the millions, right? So Moses is like, damn, how you finna do that? And Moses said, the people among who I am are 600,000 footmen. And thou shalt, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. So he said, damn, I got 600,000 men with me, not including the women and children, not even counting them. And you said you're going to feed them with flesh, not just one day, not five days, not 10 days, not 20 days, but a whole month. Right. Verse 22, it says, shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said, so he was questioning the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, is the Lord's hand waxed short? So it don't matter how shit look. Yes, there's a whole group of niggas that need to be fed. It doesn't mean nothing, right? The Lord has the power to do anything, okay? Is his hand waxing short? It says that in Isaiah 2, is the, land, is the Lord's hand shortened that he cannot save? Is ear closed that he cannot hear? Roughly paraphrasing. It says, thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out. So the Lord didn't even answer him. He said, you got to picture it. The Lord is a jake. So Moses is like, I got 600,000 men. You finna feed all of them for a whole month? The Lord's like, what? Is it's my hand waxing short? Man, you going to see what I'm going to do, right? He didn't even answer. He said, you're going to see what I do. Verse 24 says, And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord Yahweh and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord Yahweh came down on a cloud in a chariot, right? And spake unto them and took off and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So the Lord has to put the spirit upon you to prophesy. For putting the spirit upon us to prophesy. For putting his holy words and, and uh, the words of prophecy within our mouths, man. Okay? Truly a blessing. Out of the 600,000 men, right, that was amongst them, the Lord said, go and gather 70. Out of all those Israelite men... He only gave that spirit to Moses and the 70. And as you read on, it was also Eldad and Medad that was not with the 70 that also got the spirit. So in total, 72 men plus Moses and, you know, obviously Aaron, right? Now, out of the 600, over, uh, out of the 600,000 men that was amongst them, he only gave the spirit of prophecy to a few. Okay, same in these days that we're in right now. Out of, whereas the sand of the sea, out of the millions... And millions, even could be billions, right, of Israelites. Whereas the sand of the sea, he can't put a number on. He has given this truth on to us. And that's really the point. I'm going to jump down. I'm going to jump down for time's sake. Because I want to hit a couple more precepts. So I'm going to jump down to uh, Numbers chapter 11 and verse 30. It says, And Moses got him unto the camp. He and the elders of Israel... Actually, I'm going to start at verse 29. It says, And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake. So there was a man. He said, Okay, El Dad and me, Dad, they prophesying too. Moses stopped them. Moses said, Envious thou uh, 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 them for my sake. Right? It says, uh, Envious thou for my sake, would Yahweh that the Lord's people 
that the Lord's people were it's like it would Yahweh that all the Lord's people were prophets, not priests, <laughs> and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp. As it were a day's journey on this side, as it were a day's journey on that side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. It was raining quails, man. Okay? Two cubits high off the earth. The Lord can do anything. Alright? He is going to feed us. This puts a smile on my face and it boosts my faith, man. Reading these accounts... Not, you know, I don't like to use the word story, all right, but reading these accounts, reading this history because it actually happened, it's not some fairy tale, it should boost us, it should invigorate us, it should increase our faith. He fed 600,000 men, not counting the women and the children, by allowing quails to fall from, to, to fall from the sky, right? It rained quails. He fed all of our people, all right? How much more his servant? And these were niggas that was getting on his nerve. These were niggas that was talking shit, that was murmuring. He still fed them, right? How much more his servants? Okay? With, when the multitude was following Yahweh Shai, he multiplied the bread. He multiplied the fish. Okay? He can do... Uh, we can, With men, this is impossible. With Yahweh, all things are possible. All right? So let's go from there to the book of First Kings chapter 17 and verse 1. It says, Then Elijah the, Tishb the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead. Let me check real fast to see if this, this video is uploaded. Okay. So it says, 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1, it says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, uh, power of Israel, liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. So the, the Lord put um, the, 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 the spirit of prophecy within Elijah, and he prophesied a famine, just like we're prophesying a famine. It's going to come. Right. And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto him, saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and the uh, slack it shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. He commanded the birds to bring him flesh, to bring him food. And then he guided him to a brook. We'll, we'll just keep, continue to read on. Verse 5, so he went and did according unto the word of Lord Yahweh, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, um, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Alright, he had animals feeding him, birds feeding him. Nothing is, as I continue to reiterate, nothing is impossible for the Lord. The first account that we read in Numbers, he rained quails, right, to feed over a million people. Not for one day, for a whole month. That it was, he said, till it be loathsome unto you, that's going to come out your nose, right? It says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of Lord Yahweh came unto him saying, so... He was there for so long, he drank up the brook. He drank up the whole entire lake. That's how long he was there. And and it said after a while, so that whole while, however long that was, the Lord was every single day bringing him food. Okay? We don't need to trust in East. We don't need to trust in Walmart to eat, man. We don't need to have a fucking job to eat and to, to, to uh, support ourselves. Because it's not us supporting ourselves. It's the Lord that's doing it. Are we not greater than the birds or the fowls of the air? It says, And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Oh, there's another. 
he's uh, commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. And this, mind you, this is in the midst of a famine. Damn, I'm misspelling. Fucking. Well, uh, Barbara Shaw, bear with me. Psalms chapter 37. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 19. It's taking too long. This is Psalms chapter 37 and verse 19. It says. They shall not be ashamed. I'm going to start at verse uh, 18. It says, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. We will be sustained in the time of famine. All right? So going back into 1 Kings chapter 17, in verse uh, 9, it says, Arise, get thee to Zarephath. Which belongs to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain to sustain thee. So, as we read on, he goes to the house of this widow woman. All right, and I'm gonna jump down for uh for time's sake. I'll just continue to read on. Fuck it. It says, verse 10, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks, and he called her and called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So it's not like the widow woman got a text from the Most High and say, Yeah, my man's Elijah's finna come see you. Just make sure you take care of him. No, he controls spirits. He's the father of spirits. He put the spirit on her to take care of his man. To kick, to, to kick, uh, so like it, to take care of his servant. My servant shall eat when everybody else is hungry. My servant shall drink when everybody else is thirsty. My servant shall rejoice when everybody else is being put to shame. Isaiah 65. It says, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she, and she said, as the Lord thy power liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. So they're like, this is all we got. Shit. This is it. I don't got, I ain't got shit for you. Okay, I, I got enough for me and my son. And that's barely going to get us by. Uh, um, It says, um, verse 13, it says, and Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord Yahweh, power of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So when you continue to read on, it was constantly being the bread and the oil was just constantly replenishing, constantly replenishing. So in these last days, you may have, you know, a gallon of water left and you drink it all that day, put it back in the refrigerator. The next day you wake up, it's refilled, right? Every day, you just go to your refrigerator and it's refilled, <laughs> right? This is the God that we serve. This is the power that we serve. As long as we're, as long as we're seeking him, as long as our mind is staying upon him, we'll be in perfect peace, Right? So having that said, that's really all I had, man. Lord willing, that was edifying, faith boosting, and comforting. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, and Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, Rakakwadash, the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. Honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well. Shalom wa'abla bakiyo shor yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom wa'amakim, brothers, keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draweth nigh, and redemption is near than we believe. Shalom.